Hey everyone, 2023 is in the books. So I wanna share my trade results for the full year of 2023. Uh, I'm gonna do it a couple different ways. I'm gonna break it down, uh, my performance by the account, by my accounts that I trade, and then I'm gonna break it down uh, in, a per in performance by strategy. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about asset class performance in general for the year of 2023. Uh, and it, I'm gonna break this up into two videos. So the second video, uh, will just be posted in the in our Discord community to our members. But in the second video, I'm going to do a 2024 market prediction. As you can see, I have prediction in quotes because, uh, as you know, how I feel about predictions, they're about as good as the ink on this screen, which the ink on the screen is free, if you didn't know. So uh, just give you a little bit of a, a kind of a market prediction, kind of what I what I anticipate or what I think might happen in 2024. Then I'm going to lay out my full game plan for 2024 and how I plan to trade. And then uh, just a little bit about my 2024 trading goals. So with that, let's jump in uh, and we'll, we'll start off by breaking down my trade results by account. And actually, before I do that, I want to just uh, show this as well. This is actually... Uh, Dr. Chad's uh, day trading performance. So Chad runs a day trading live stream for us about two or three days a week uh, at the market open. So these are his results, but I just wanted to share these real quick. So uh, a couple of different strategies. One's called the Mighty 90. He took 188 of those, had a 73% win rate for a little over 23,000. Uh, a volume runner trade uh, took 200 of those, about a 55% win rate, 14,000 in profits. And the continuation runner, he took 148 of those, 55% win rate, a little over 12,000 in profits. So bottom line, 536 trades, 61% win rate, and just over 50,000 for the year. So Chad just continues to be extremely consistent and, and disciplined with that. So um, cool stuff there. All right, so I can't take credit for that, though. Those are, those are Chad's results. Just wanted to share those. Uh, when it comes to my results, let's get to those. So I have three three accounts that I trade for the the, nav the trades that I do uh, for the community. Um, and so the first one is my Thinkorswim portfolio margin account. And the strategies that I primarily traded in this account throughout the year uh, was zero DTE and my portfolio margin strategies. There were some other, you know, calendar spreads, butterfly spreads, some other trades taken in this, in this account too. One thing that um, if you've been following me, you know, is that, you know, sometimes if there are strikes that overlap in one account, I will move that strategy and trade it in the other. So is that the best for performance reporting? No, probably not, but that's how I do it. So it is what it is. Uh, but overall, the return in this account uh, for 2023 was outstanding 357.25% for the year. I did have a pretty horrendous drawdown of a little over 42%. And that primarily was due to in March, uh, some portfolio margin mistakes that I made. Now, the good news for our community is we didn't actually start our portfolio margin program until the beginning of May. So this is when I was still doing some testing, but I got a little out over my skis on some pretty sizable positions, especially for the fact that I was really just kind of testing them. Uh, and, and so that was the that was the cause of this max drawdown. I did have a couple other drawdowns uh, in excess of 20%, uh, but this was the this was the max one, uh, about 42%. So the way this looks, here's kind of my PL curve. Uh, you can see fairly consistently left to right uh, with some little dances and jiggies in between here. Here's that, here's that big draw down there. Luckily, it was when my account was smaller. Uh, and then, you know, this didn't feel good either. This was a combination of portfolio margin and uh, some zero DTE volatility, but end of the year, uh, extremely strong. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you as we break down the different strategy, uh, looking at this account by, uh, monthly returns, uh, you can see, you know, May was a monster to the upside. Uh, October was my biggest month over you know, almost, what was it? Probably 44%, I believe something somewhere in there just in October and then December, another big month. 
uh, little drawdown in this account at the end of the month in November and March. So uh, the cool thing that this shows versus the last slide is for, with the drawdown is that I ended March with the account only down 9%. And I ended November with the account only down uh, whatever that is, 6%. So, uh, but the intra month drawdown is, is what I showed you before. So you can see, even though it was a massive drawdown in March, I was able to make a lot of that back before the end of that month. So this just shows, uh, my net lick at the end of the month, um, on a percentage basis. So that's my monthly returns. All right. Next account. This is my other thinkorswim account. This is a standard margin account. And in this account, uh, I do a hodgepodge of strategies, including option selling, short strangles, hedgehogs, iron ducks, uh, time flies, some zero DTE, and some calendars as well. Uh, the return on this account was negative, down almost 8%. Also had a, a pretty sizable drawdown. In fact, one that I'm still in. And that was primarily due to time fly management errors, which we have corrected. Um, but, uh, so that was the, that was the main culprit for that, for that max drawdown and really for the negative return of this account, option selling did awesome. Hedgehogs did awesome. Ducks did great. Uh, time flames did great for a while and then just had a massive drawdown there. Uh, and then some of the zero DTE and calendars did fine. So monthly, uh, or here's the, uh, the, uh, uh, graph of my PL, my portfolio in blue. You see, pretty choppy. Not what you want out of, of a PL graph. Uh, and I and like I said, this is time fly, time fly stuff. Uh, portfolio uh, broke broken down my monthly returns. You can see I had a 20% drawdown in March in this account, about a 12% in May, about a 22% in September, and you know, down a little bit this month. Had some good up months too, you know, 15%, 17%, 20%, 17 ish percent. Uh, but still again, small red on the year for that account. And then my third account is a trade year account, also a standard margin account. Uh, the primary strategy I traded in this account was kind of my back test driven calendars, which is something new that I've been doing this year. I uh, did trade some butterflies earlier in the year. Uh, but the overall return in the account for the year, 82.79%. Uh, the max drawdown, this is this is at the end of the month. So intra-month, it was most likely bigger. Uh, but I don't have the data from Tradier that I do with Toss. With Toss, I can get in and input every single day, the net look at the end of the day. With Tradier, I just had to do it at the end of the month. So you can kind of see... Uh, but this was my net lick at the end of each month and see that you can see it kind of is more, looks more like a stair step than a flowing graph because, uh, these values are done on a, a monthly basis as opposed to a daily, like the ones you saw in toss, but ending on a high note, uh, on that trade account as well. If we look at the monthly, you can see two drawdown months, April, November, the rest positive October being the best at about plus 25% in one month. Um, so that's my, my monthly breakdown of the Tradier account. All right, so trade results by strategy. I'm gonna break these down in six different categories. So we've got zero DTE, calendar spreads, butterfly spreads, iron ducks, options selling, and portfolio margin. Okay, these are all the categories that I review every week in our community. And so that's the, the trading category, the primary core trading categories that I trade. All right, so with that, let me bring up my Trader Sync. This is the platform I upload my trades to every day after the market closes. Uh, so we'll start with zero DTE. Now, some of these zero DTE strategies are strategies that I traded earlier in the year and I don't currently trade. And you can see those are those have a little Y in front of them. And that's just to put it at the bottom of the alphabet. So they go down to the bottom. So they're not cluttering up my, my trade tracker. Uh, and then a bunch of these that don't have the little Y in front of them. These are the ones that I'm currently trading. So, uh, total profit for the year for zero DTE, 290,000. Um, the unfortunate thing is the last trading day in December, uh, I lost about $10,000. So it would have put me over the three K 300 K mark. Uh, unfortunately, 
still okay with it. Made 290 uh, on zero DTE. Uh, I'm not going to break down every strategy here, but I will point out, as most of you know in the, in the community, my, my most profitable strategy by far, uh, not just zero DTE, but any, any strategy I traded was power hour. So if I take these off and just show you power hour, Okay, click, click, click. Let me get all these clicked off. And then the power hour strategies that I used to trade. I'll include those as well. So it'd be these. All right, so this is just power hour for 2023. So you can see, oh, that 290,000, 221,000 was power hour trading the last hour of the day. So pretty awesome stuff. All right, so that's zero DTE. Next, I'm going to go to next, we'll go to dynamic butterflies. So butterflies were uh, red for the year. This was my worst performing strategy, minus 6,485. And you'll notice hitting it at an 80 0.28% win rate on 73 trades. So the win rate's great. And they did really awesome. Had a couple little drawdowns here and there. Nothing big. Really consistent performance. Little drawdown there. Really consistent performance until A, I, a, I did increase my size. And this is where my mismanaged trades come in. I mean, three in a row. These were all on at the same time and just let them go too far. And it was in this period here. Um, this is SPX. So you can see this is where the drawdown happened. And you can see what SPX did. Obviously, if you've been trading for the last few months of the year, it just went straight up. And um, and I just I let those losses get out of hand as opposed to managing that risk. But I've, I've uh, tweaked the way that I position the strategy at entry. Uh, so that couldn't happen again uh, based on the way that I structure the trades now. Uh, but it is part of the performance. I mean, it is it is what it is. So unfortunately, red on butterflies for the year. Next category is dynamic calendar spreads. So I got a lot of these I got to click. So bear with me as I make sure we cover all the different dynamic calendar strategies. And I've got some down here that I don't trade anymore, but I did trade throughout the year. And let's give it a quick refresh and small green, 3,276, uh, about a 66 and a half percent win rate. So unfortunately, uh, last year calendars were one of my most profitable strategies this year. They were just meh. Now, uh, to break that down just a little bit further, um, if I take off my, uh, TGIF strategy, my performance goes to positive almost 26,000. Now, you can't do that, right? <laughs> so I'm not trying to dismiss the losers and just look at the winners, but the my TGIF strategy was one of my best performing strategies in 2022, and it was one of the worst in, uh, in 2023. So uh, a lot of my uh, back test driven, you know, started using Option Omega at the end of 2022. And so, uh, you know, if I look at just my back test driven strategies, which would be, oh, yeah. Uh, let's, okay, so that's not back test driven. That's not, that's not, that's not. So the rest of these are my back test driven strategies. Uh, so over 33,000 on those, uh, almost 68% win rate. So we'll continue to uh, have an emphasis on those going forward in 2024. Um, but that's the breakdown of my calendar strategies. Next category, iron ducks. Got a couple reverse iron ducks in there. Um, so with iron ducks, my total profit, a uh, little over $5,400 on 54 trades. Uh, so a lot of small winners. Now what's, what's kind of crazy is look at this win rate, 84.91%. Now, when we set up these trades, what, what probability are we targeting? 
Well, for those of you who've trade with us, you know it's 85%. So isn't that phenomenal? How once you get to a certain number of currencies, the probabilities actually play out. Now, um, that doesn't necessarily, you know, win rate doesn't necessarily mean you make money. Uh, obviously, in this case, we did. Uh, but it's just interesting how those probabilities seem to always play out once you get to a certain number of trade occurrences. Uh, so breaking these down, uh, primarily SPX, RUT, and QQQ, those trades were in. Uh, so decent, decent year for Duck. Had a couple of sessions where the market kind of smoked us out of a couple, uh, but managed these pretty well. Didn't really have any blunders where we had any losses get out of, get out of control. Um, you know, so did, did pretty well on Ducks. All right. Next category is... Option selling. So this includes hedgehogs, reverse hedgehogs, short strangles, and some VIX strategies. Give a quick refresh here. And a little over 36,000 on option selling strategies, 68% win rate. Uh, if I break these down a little bit further, for example, short strangles just continue to do very well. Um, if I look at just short strangles, you can see a 94% win rate on 55 trades. We only had 30, uh, we only had three losers out of, uh, out of 55 trades on our short strangles. So those continues to do well. And then, uh, lastly, portfolio margin. So zero DTE was my best performing category and portfolio margin was my second best performing category for the year. Uh, let me click on, I've got some other portfolio margin strategies that I do not trade anymore, but I did trade throughout 2023. So let me make sure I click on those. There we go. Give it a quick refresh and the total profit for my portfolio margin strategy is a little over 82,000. 68% win rate on 194 trades. Uh, if I break these down, uh, just to show you kind of my best performers, um, uh, let's just go this, let's do this. So golden butterflies, uh, let me refresh this, make sure that's right. Why are these still here? Oh, yeah. Sorry, let me X out of these real quick. Just to, I just want to show you a couple different strategies here that we'll continue to focus on a little bit heavier in 2024. And there we go. There we go. All right, so Golden Butterflies just did six of those, but a uh, profit of over 17,000 on those. Uh, the other ones I'll show you, uh, Golden Sharks continue to do very well. Fortunately, I have to refresh this sometimes. 16 Golden Shark trades, 86, almost 87% win rate, over 34,000 on Sharks. And uh, the other one was Humpties. So Humpties, I had some big P&L swings in Humpties, um, ended up, positive for the year on Humpties it was up a bunch in like October, November. And then, um, you know, had some, had some pretty sizable losses that I let get out of hand. Actually, those were just really big positions. Um, and so ended up positive on Humpties, but, um, tweaked a couple different things on how we're managing those as well. So look forward to trading those when we have periods of, uh, of high volatility, um, and so that's the, that's the breakdown of, um, of my, uh, portfolio margin. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is asset class performance year to date. So let's take a look at how the different asset classes performed. Um, if we take a look at the S and P S and P and this is futures, So the index might be slightly different, but S and P ended up a little over 25% higher on the year. Uh, NASDAQ ended up 55% higher 
Russell ended up in the green by 16% after a massive run from the end of October to put it into the green. It was negative uh, just a couple short months ago. Uh, Dow ended up about 14%. Gold ended up a little over 12% higher. Silver ended up pretty flat, actually slightly red on the year from where it started. Uh, Bonds, uh, slightly red on the year, down 1.82%. Notes down about a quarter of a percent. 10-year yield, uh, still up a few percent, but was up as much as uh, almost 33% at one point during the year. Uh, Oil down 7.62. Natty gas. Natty gas down uh, over 37%. Uh, Taking a look at some of the grains here. Soybeans ended up down 13% lower. Uh, Wheat ended up 19% lower from where it started the year. Corn ended up almost 30% lower from where it started the year. Uh, The euro ended uh, up 4.47. The British pound ended up uh, 6.28% higher. And the biggest performer of the year was everybody's favorite category, Bitcoin. Bitcoin ended the year up 155.46%. So that's it for 2023, my friends. It was a good year. I look forward to an even better year in 2024. And again, I will post my my goals and, and lay out my game plan for trading in 2024 in a separate video to the community. Cheers. Happy New Year. And look forward to 2024. Take care.